we will have a glimpse from Bhagwan Sudama life. It was in 1993, November, Bhagwan fell sick. He had this viral fever all of a sudden. They treated him, different doctors, it did not work. Finally, of course, when I persistently begged him to come to Sudama so that he could be looked after, in Sanadhi Street he won't have anybody with him. So finally Bhagavan agreed to come only for three days and then he came. After that the doctor said he could continue because in Sanadhi Street there is nobody to look after him. Whereas here in Ramannagar there is plenty of air and sunlight, very important for health. So that's how Bhagwan came to stay in Sudama. In the beginning, of course, Dr. Radha Krishna prescribed walking as the most important exercise for him, and then a certain other exercise for his knees. Accordingly, every day morning, early morning, four o'clock, four to five, Bhagwan would be walking up and down, up and down, and I would walk with him. It was during this time we had many conversations, and sometimes Bhagwan would give one song, would mention a particular song, and say, "Devki, you sing." And when he said sing, he wouldn't give us time to think. And it had to flow spontaneously, and it did. Every time, surprisingly. But then there's no surprise about it because in his presence, it is a Shakti which is at work all the time. Now one hour, four to five, he would walk, and after that, he had to do this exercise. Sudama was open, the veranda was open in the beginning, but Bhagwan said, we have to put up this iron rods so that the monkeys would not enter. Many, many people would come with fruits. So it would become a nuisance to those people, and what was more, his attention would also be drawn away. So after we put that grill with plain rods, the next exercise that he had to follow was, he must hold on to the rods and then lift one knee high up and put it down, counting it as one. And then the next knee. And the third will be, once again, the right one, the fourth will be left. So left, right, left, right, I had to count up to twenty. Bhagwan was yours obediently the very first day, the second day, and I began to appreciate how beautifully he obeys the commands of doctor. And the third day, he walked S Fort five. But after that, when he came and held on to the rocks there, he lifted his right knee. I counted one. He put it down and then he lifted his left knee up. I counted two. And then again he lifted his right knee and it was three. And when he lifted his left knee, it was four. And then the fifth time, when he lifted, I was going to say five, he always had a knack. If he did not want to hear me say something, whenever I started, he would start immediately. He would start at the same time. Then I would realize that he started, so I would stop. 
and it would never get to be spoken. Then I would understand, okay, he didn't want me to say it. Certain things were always better unsaid. So here I was about to start five and he started simultaneously and said, twenty. So it was one, two, three, four, twenty. He changed the tables. He changed mathematics. And when he said twenty after four, it had to be only twenty after four, at least for me. There was no five, six or seven or nineteen. So when he said twenty, and then, and the way he said it, I had to keep quiet because he, he did it very seriously. So I could not say anything. I could not say, Bhagwan, let's do it just a few more times, Bhagwan. Sometimes I would beg. So his seriousness, the countenance, would not allow me to say anything. I kept quiet. He sat down in all seriousness. Then I also sat down. And then I was thinking, what is this? He has changed the table completely. Maybe from today onwards, it's one, two, three, four, twenty. Of course, I was not thinking seriously, but the thought did occur to me that he was changing the counting altogether, which meant he did not want to do it anymore, and probably it meant a stop altogether. And I looked up. He was looking at me strangely, and then he burst out laughing. And he laughed and laughed and laughed so much, and I had to laugh also. So we were laughing for quite some time together. Always it was such a joy, it was a blissful joy when he laughed, infectious laughter. I used to think that the whole world would be laughing with him in complete bliss, in great ananda. That was the way he did things. He was an avdhut, very unpredictable. You would never know what he would say, what he would say next, what he would do next. And there was no way we could ask him also. Something would block us. He wouldn't say anything, but then something would hold us. And then, of course, he said one day, whatever this beggar does is in tune with the whole cosmos, Devaki, don't expect similar reactions from this beggar. Every thought, every word, every action of this beggar is controlled by the governor of the cosmos, the entire cosmos. The one who governs the whole cosmos is governing this beggar also. Is every look, every thought, every word, every action is completely under the control of Father. So whatever this beggar says or does is in tune with the whole cosmos. It doesn't apply to one situation or one time. So there you are. So Bhagwan, when you said one, two, three, four, twenty, it had to be only one, two, three, four, twenty. So let us beg Bhagwan today, 
Bhagavan, no matter what the plan of the divine is for the entire world in general and India in particular, you could change the whole mathematics in a fraction of a second, just as you did that day. Instead of five, you said twenty, and then it was always that. You never got to do the exercise. Now can you not do something like this now, no matter what the Divine Father has prescribed for this world, you could still change it by your immediate Divine intervention, Bhagwan. We beg you a million times. to extricate the whole world in general and India in particular because of the worsening conditions here from the dreadful grip of this virulent monster and bring back normalcy to the world in every aspect of life. And Bhagwan kindly approved the panic and all other negativities. Please stop the rapid spread of the disease. He entered those medicines so that they would kill the virus altogether and help all these people who are waiting outside for a room in the hospital for oxygen, for some medical treatment. Bhagavan, please reach out to them, all that is necessary, so that they would get well soon and come back home. And all those great warriors who are fighting the disease at the very risk of their lives in order to save other lives, please give them protection and all round will be. We also beg you for a lift to economy. For many, many people, life has come to a stop. There is no income at all. There is very little food available. But only Bhagwan should arrange something and change the whole thing, the whole facade of today's situation. And we beg you, Bhagwan, to remember your name constantly. Bhagwan, when I asked him, you said one, two, three, four, twenty. It is not regular mathematics. And then he laughed, of course, and then she said, then he, this beggar is always inconsistent. He is consistently inconsistent. And then again he burst out laughing. So we hope our inconsistent Bhagwan would change the whole facade of today's situation, bring relief to everybody and bless us with the attitude of gratitude and to go about our lives as an offering to Him, as an instrument in His hands. And above all, please bless us with that purification, that transformation, so that we would be able to see only Your presence and Your blessings in every happening of life. Jai Yogi Ramsar.